Um, so what I want to talk about today is, is kind of something I already talked a little bit about at uh, the summer field day, and that's this kind of this reduced risk disease control program we're trying to implement. And a lot of this plays off of uh, some of Lisa's research. And so Lisa's going to look into a lot of different toxicological impacts of pesticide usage in turf grass. And so this is a more applied extension related project. So we'll talk about uh, a little bit more about uh, the project in depth as we move along here. So before we uh, can reduce risk, we have to identify what risk is. All right, so it, almost everybody in this room uh, should be certified in category 3.0 in the state of Wisconsin for applying pesticides. Um, and so uh, what uh, the Department of Ag Trade and Consumer Protection defines risk as, uh, there's two components. There's hazard, uh, and so really what hazard is, is the toxicity of a compound, okay? How toxic is that compound? So we know that there's different compounds that we apply that have different levels of toxicity, okay? So if we apply, um, I'll, I'll use a non-pesticide example, something like hydrochloric or sulfuric acid is highly toxic, right? A very small amount of that will cause a great deal of damage. Other products our other compounds are much less uh, hazardous and less toxic. But when we're talking about risk, we're talking about the potential to cause injury. So the other component of risk then is exposure. So this risk equation is a central tenet of toxicology, and it comes down to two factors here, right? Hazard, how toxic is that compound, and then exposure, how much, ex how much are we being exposed uh, to that particular compound? <laughs> All right, so how do you go about reducing risk? I'm gonna pose this question out to you. If you were a superintendent, if you were managing turf grass, how would you manage or how would you propose to reduce risk at your facility? Okay, we can reduce the number of times you spray, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to reduce our exposure, okay? So, uh, I mean, obviously, time, or types of or methods for pest application uh, have changed over the years, so we want to reduce the amount of exposure from what we're seeing in this picture. Okay. How do we reduce toxicity? All right, so there's different ways that um, governmental agencies measure toxicity. Really one of the one of the easiest ways though, and, and this is widely available to uh, the general public, is through the EPA's reduced risk program. Okay, this is nothing new. This this was developed in, in 1996 with the Food Quality Protection Act. And really what it is, it's it's an incentive to companies to produce um, less toxic products. Okay, so you know some of the latest numbers that I've heard are it takes it takes a couple company like Bayer, Syngenta, or BASF, whoever, it takes them about 10 years and about 300 million dollars to bring a product from discovering the mo molecule to market. Okay, so if they have a, a molecule that is uh, been identified as reduced risk, or they are going to propose it to the EPA as a reduced risk molecule, the EPA is going to expedite that whole process. Expediting the process is going to save uh, save money, uh, not only in the testing that is done initially, but we're also going to have more time with the product under patent. Right, so that's a, that's a big incentive for companies to bring products to the market that are reduced risk. So here's the website here at the, uh, at the bottom of the page. There's a whole list of all the products that EPA has uh, listed as reduced risk. So some of the advantages the EPA lists uh, of reduced, reduced risk, lower impact on human health, there's lower uh, runoff potential, lower toxicity to, to non-target uh, non organisms, lower use rates, a uh, whole host of um, uh, benefits that EPA lists. So again, I already mentioned it, if it doesn't control disease, it's not going to be of any use to us. So how well did it control disease? So this is the results from just uh, one of three plots on the, on the 14 pole year range. The other two were, were pretty comparable to this one. So if we look at, we have our non-treated, our, uh, our conventional program, then the two programs with the model, where we use conventional fungicides and then only reduced risk fungicides. We have three rating dates that, we, that I include on this graph, uh, June 20th, to July 30th, and August uh, 12th. And so the first, uh, on the non-treated control, we saw a fair amount of dollar spot. We didn't really have much in June, and you can see that the amount of dollar spot really increases uh, significantly throughout the year. By the end of August, or by the middle of August, we have a significant amount of dollar spot on the non-treat control plant. All right, what about that treatment too? What about the conventional program? We would expect that program to be very effective. And what we do is we see it is very effective. You can barely see uh, the bars uh, show anything on that, uh, on that conventional program. All right, now what about the model? How does the model do using conventional fungicides? Extremely well. You can't even tell, but I clicked the advanced button. There's nothing that came up, really no dollar spot in any of those days. Okay, now let's look at the model with the reduced risk fungicides. Same thing, we said just a couple of dollar spots come in in August, okay? So this is a, this is a, a program, this is a method that I foresee using on fairways, not putting greens, where we can, we can tolerate a small amount of disease. So really what this slide shows is that using the model, using our reduced risk program, uh, we control disease as effectively as we do with that, that traditional conventional program, using less fungicides, using less toxic fungicides. So we know that it controls disease. 
Okay, controls dollar spot, I should say very well. We didn't see any other diseases, uh, but again, in Wisconsin, our primary summer disease is going to be dollar spots. If we control dollar spot, we're going to be doing pretty good. So what else can we look at with these programs, right? We're trying to reduce risk using these programs. So how can we measure uh, risk, or how can we approximate risk um, you know, in, in our situation? One of those ways is the amount of active ingredient applied with each of these products, or with, the, with each of these pro uh, programs, okay? So again, we have basically uh, our conventional program, treatment two, treatment three, which is using the model. We have treatment four, uh, which is using the model with reduced glycine fungicide. Then here on the x-axis, I had uh, pounds active ingredient per acre. Okay, so our conventional program is about 22, 23 pounds of active ingredient per acre. So, you know, we'll, we'll go through each one of the applications that we made again in a couple slides. But each one of those applications, you add up the amount of active ingredient applied, it adds up to about 23 pounds per acre. All right. Now, what about using that model? We made two less applications using the model with conventional fungicides. What about the pounds of active ingredient per acre there? We're actually higher. All right, and we'll see this in a little bit. The reason we are higher is we have we have one more application of Dacanil Weather Stick, so chlorothalmin. That's a high active ingredient uh, application that we're making there. So that's really what impacts uh, the amount of active ingredient applied. All right. Now, what about this reduced risk program using using the model? Way down. We're less than five. Okay, so the amount of active ingredient applied using reduced risk fungicides drops dramatically. We're dropping somewhere anywhere between uh, 85, uh, right around 80, 85%. Okay, so that's a significant reduction in the amount of active ingredient applied, and we're not seeing a reduction in disease control. The model is not great at predicting dollar spot in the fall, and we're not exactly sure why. All right, so we, we every year, and this year included, we saw a, a relatively large outbreak of dollar spot in the fall. In late October, I think early November, somewhere right in there. The model only had a probability down around 8, 10%. What could be happening is that, I mean, at that time of year, we have a couple hours more uh, of darkness of night, and so that could be sort of impacting the accuracy of the model. So we're going to have to go back and look at that, about why it's not predicting the R spot there in, in the late fall. All right, then the other issue that I already mentioned is cost. We did do a rough cost analysis, and the conventional uh, treatment came out to about uh, $1,200 an acre. All right, that, that uh, using the model, so two less applications came out to about 840 bucks an acre, and then if we use that reduced risk program, it was more expensive than the uh, conventional using the model, but not more expensive than the conventional not using the model. All right, so there's certainly an expense issue, but you know at least in this one year of data, we do see that there is um, uh, there's potential cost savings over a uh, treatment that doesn't use the model. All right, so just a real quick summary here, then uh, wrapping things up. Uh, we can uh, go ahead and reduce the number of, of sprays and the toxicity of the compounds used. Those are both important for reducing the risk. Um, we have tools that are out there to, to help you do this right now, right? There's a list of, it, of reduced risk pesticides. We're working on the model. We're going to kind of, kind of launch it in, in a small scale. I'll have more on that, I think, in a, in a slide or two. Um, and, but there are still concerns. It's not a perfect program. We're still working on this. We're, we're going to do another year of data on this and, and try and alleviate some of these concerns that we still have. Uh, with, with the program at this time. All right, with that, there's my contact information. Uh, again, thanks for, uh, for coming today, everybody. I know the conditions work great, so appreciate uh, the support of the WTA and, uh, and our Sheriff Press program here in Wisconsin.